In this video, I'll be solving problem 8.7 from Taylor's Classical Mechanics. Part A asks us to use elementary Newtonian mechanics to find the period of a mass m1 in a circular orbit of radius r around a fixed mass m2, as seen in the diagram. Um, first, we know that the gravitational force is equal to the masses times Newton's constant over r squared in the r direction. We also know from Newton's second law that force is equal to mass times acceleration, which in this case is equal to mass times the centripetal acceleration also in the r direction. Um, so we've got g m1 m2 over r squared is equal to that's m1 that's accelerating here. m2 is fixed. Um, we've got the directions cancel. It's nice. This is a one-dimensional problem. Um, and we can replace the centripetal acceleration with its equivalent v squared over r or omega squared r. Those are the same thing. Now, we know that the expression for the period of rotation is 2 pi over omega. So we can substitute that in. And then we can do some algebra. So we'll be solving for tau. So I'll just start rearranging here. M1 cancels. And we have 2 pi squared over here. R to the third over g m2. This gives us for tau 2 pi r to the 3 halves over the square root of g m2, and that's the period of orbit. Okay, part b asks us to use the separation into center of mass and relative motions to find the corresponding period for the case that m2 is not fixed, and the masses circle each other a constant distance r apart. Discuss the limit of this result if m2 approaches infinite mass. All right, so I've drawn a little diagram here. Um, the key to this part of the problem is that r, the distance between the two masses, is fixed. This means that r1, the distance from mass 1 to the center of mass, is also fixed and is equal to m2 over the total mass times r. Similarly, r2 is equal to m1 over the total mass times r. Notice that these are not vectors. Um, we're just going to use the magnitudes. Um, so because these two radii are constant, each mass effectively orbits the center of mass in a circular orbit. We can use that fact to use the same mechanics in part A to solve the problem. So first, both forces in magnitude are the same. They're equal to the Newton constant times both masses over r squared. Let's deal with mass 1 first. We can use the same expression for centripetal acceleration as in part A. So AC equals R1 times 2 pi squared over the period squared. Now if we set F equal to MA. Oh, we'll, we'll get to that in a second. So we can immediately replace R1 in the expression for centripetal acceleration with its definition m2 over m times r. Okay, then we have force equals m1 times the centripetal acceleration
and we can do some algebra to solve again for tau. Both the masses cancel, and then we have tau squared is equal to 2 pi squared r to the third over g m. This looks similar to part a. So tau is equal to 2 pi times r to the 3 halves over the square root of the gravitational constant times the total mass. Now, in part a, uh, recall that the expression for tau is exactly the same, except with m2 instead of the total mass. So, in the limit that m2 approaches infinity, we approach m2 equals the total mass because m2 is way, way bigger than m1. In this case, it would be the same expression as in part a. Okay, part c asks, what would be the orbital period if the Earth were replaced by a star of mass equal to the solar mass in a circular orbit with the distance between the sun and star equal to the present Earth-sun distance, noting that the mass of the sun is more than 300,000 times that of the Earth. Currently, the Earth-Sun system approximates part A because the Earth is so much smaller than the Sun. So in part A, recall that the orbital period was equal to 2 pi r to the 3 halves over the square root of the gravitational constant times m2, or in this case, the mass of the Sun. In this case, the orbital period tau equals 1 year. In the new system where Earth has been replaced by a star, the situation is more accurately approximated by part B, where the masses of m1 and m2 are comparable. So our expression for the period there was given by tau equals 2 pi r to the 3 halves over the square root of the gravitational constant times the total mass of the system. So let's get down here. Part C, we have tau equals 2 pi r to the 3 halves over the square root of the gravitational constant times the total mass. Now we know the total mass, it's twice the mass of the sun. Now how does that compare to tau of Earth, the period of Earth, which is 2 pi r to the 3 halves over square root of the gravitational constant times just the mass of the sun. Well, we can separate this out into root two times root gms. And then this is just equal to the period of the earth. So we have that the new period of the system would be equal to period of the Earth over the square root of 2. And if you plug that into your calculator, it equals approximately 0 0.7 years. Thank you.